My boyfriend of four years, 27 male, ghosted me, 27 female, after I was in a car accident. Raspberry lemonade My pops. boyfriend, 27 male of four years and I, 27 female, got into a bit of a silly argument the other day and went to bed not talking. We currently don't live together. The next morning, I woke up to a long apology text from him. I texted him back, accepting his apology and apologizing as well. Minutes later, I was involved in a car accident as a passenger in a vehicle. I was lucky enough to be able to walk away from the scene, but it was a very, very close call. Extremely traumatic for me. I went to the hospital shortly after with my mom. I called my boyfriend before arriving to the hospital to let him know what was happening. He couldn't believe what I was telling him and expressed how grateful he was that I was still alive. Hours later, as I'm arriving back home from the hospital, he called me to check in. I missed his first call, but answered on the second one two minutes later. We were on the phone together for less than three minutes. As I was explaining him the situation, I was stuttering. I was trying to get out. The guy at the hospital said, referring to the doctor or the nurse that saw me at the hospital. My boyfriend swears he heard me say the Hawkeye at the hospital. He wouldn't listen to me. He began talking over me, saying things like, What Hawkeye at the hospital? You messed up. You're tripping on your words. You might not have meant to, but you definitely said the Hawkeye at the hospital. I got fed up that I couldn't get a word in and loudly said, I'm going to hang up over him speaking, then hung up on him. Seconds later, he texts me. How are you going to say the Hawkeye at the hospital and then hang up on me? Laughing emoji. Whatever. Feel better. Peace sign emoji. I'm not going to quote the whole exchange. It was continued with me calling him fucked for treating me like this after the day that I had. I told him that I was mentally and physically in so much pain and that there was not a hot guy at the hospital and i didn't say that he said i was gaslighting him that lately i've been acting abusive and rude to him he said have a good day feel better i'm not dealing with this shit it's now been five days and we haven't talked he hasn't checked in on me at all i'm pretty confident he hasn't asked any of my family or friends how i'm doing either to be very clear there was no hot guy at the hospital do I contact him first or continue to wait for him to contact me? Am I the asshole for finding out my boyfriend met his ex-girlfriend through his dash cam? I, 25 female, recently found myself in a perplexing situation that I stumbled upon unexpectedly while checking my boyfriend's dash cam footage. The intention was to get some good video footage from a trip that we just came back on, so I didn't want to snoop into his privacy or every, anything, I was just looking to make a video. To my shock, I found footage of him meeting up with his ex-girlfriend in secret. The discovery left me mixed of emotions, hurt, betrayed, and uncertain about how to address the situation. When I confronted him about it, his reaction was far from what I anticipated. He became extremely angry, accusing me of invalidating Organizing his privacy and checking drawer. the dash cam without his consent. I tried to explain that my intention was merely to review our road trip footage to include in a video and that I didn't expect any footage on the dash cam to be considered a breach of privacy, especially on a trip that we took together. However, he remained adamant about feeling violated and insisted that relationships should be built on trust, not snooping. While I understand the importance of trust and respecting one another's privacy in a relationship, discovering a secret meetup with his ex raises serious concerns. Now I find myself torn between the desire for transparency and the need to respect boundaries. Mm -hmm. Am I the asshole for checking my boyfriend's dash cam without him knowing and confronting him about meeting his ex, or should I have respected his privacy and address my concerns differently? Am I the asshole for telling my husband that I will answer our clients myself so he can't take away my commission? I've, 32 female, been with my husband, 40 male, for over 10 years now. We have two daughters together, ages 9 and 11. Although I know we are not perfect, I feel as though he will never take accountability for his actions. I, it's been a problem in his family. His mom, aunts, and uncles are all the very same. Quick to fight and never admitting when they're wrong. Just try to hit below the belt if they feel like they are losing type people. So I know it's not entirely his fault. It's how he's grown up and defended himself. Plenty of times in an argument, he has told me this house that was received as a gift from his family isn't mine and he can take me out whenever he wants. 
He's told me all the money he makes is his own and I don't do anything to earn money. He's even said that I've stolen from him when I've been a stay-at-home mom for the last nine years. That's a decision we made together, but he really pushed for it. He says the car is his and I can't use it at all when it was also a gift from his family for us to transport our daughters around and he could get to work. He's basically pulled his power trip on me before an argument just to be petty multiple times. The last big argument was a couple nights ago. That's a whole different story, but we haven't made up. Just been cordial. He made me lunch today and I've been making him tea or whatever he needs without him asking, basically just going along as normal, just not talking very much. Today I had been talking to some clients over text messages. We sell land and houses that he has bought and flipped, so they are all under his name. I was asking some basic questions and if he had the GPS of the location and he said, let me see the phone, I'll just talk to them myself. And I said, no, because I wouldn't want him to take away my commission and said, I didn't do anything to earn it. He got mad, of course. He said it was a stupid thing to say and not to ask him for any more help and do it myself then. I feel that's just what his job is and he should be willing to answer those questions from anybody. But am I the asshole for being petty and bringing up another fight when things were fine by my comment? Am I the asshole for breaking up with my girlfriend over her younger sister? I need some outside perspective on this situation. I broke up with my girlfriend, 27 female, five days ago due to her sister's behavior, 24 female. Me and my ex have been dating for the last two years. During this time, her sister has come on to me multiple times. I'm not completely sure about the amount of times, but it was almost every time I saw her. I have told the sister multiple times to leave me alone and to stop her behavior as I do not do the cheating thing, but that did nothing. I've spoken to my ex about this multiple times. She even caught her sister in the act of trying to lock me in a room with herself, but nothing changed. I've spoken to her parents about it and that the behavior of the youngest daughter is unacceptable and again, nothing happened. I'm not going to lie and say the sister is ugly because she's actually pretty beautiful, but I am 100% not into her or anything like that. Even when I greeted her, I gave her a side hug every single time. I've never been in a room alone with her. I just keep my distance from her at all costs. I don't have her on Insta, Facebook, or any other social media. I don't even have her cell phone number. We have never shared a text or phone call. Her family even gave me a stupid nickname, The Puppy, because I follow my girlfriend around everywhere when we are over at their house. The only reason I follow her is because her sister's behavior seemed to stop when she is around. I have told her that I will stop going over to her parents' house because that is where the problems are and I want no part of it. She didn't like that idea and sulked around the house for weeks because I didn't want to go with her. No point in time did I tell her she can't go, I just wasn't going to go with her. I relented five days ago and went over. We had too much to drink and slept over at the parents' house that night. The morning I woke up, I woke up to the sister completely naked in the bed next to me. I stormed out of the room and down to the kitchen told her that we were done in front of her parents. She was silent for what seemed like minutes and started to break down asking why. All I said was go look in that room and I stormed out of the house and got in my car. It took less than two minutes then the calls started to come in but not from her but her parents as well. I didn't answer any of the calls. When I got home 40 minutes later I had 108 missed calls from her her parents and 36 messages and two from her parents. The messages from her parents just apologizing to me saying they thought I was joking about the sister every time I brought it up and they didn't believe me. All I got from my now ex was sorry and she will handle it and it will never happen again. I shouldn't leave, we can work through this. I'm just done. She has gotten my family involved and our friend. 90% of them is on her side saying I'm overreacting and I'm the asshole for dumping her. We can sort this out. I sent her a message that she has until this Sunday to get her things out of my house. I'm just done. Surprisingly, she has not sugarcoated everything and explained everything correctly to everyone, but I'm still in the wrong for leaving her. Her parents in their messages are angry at me for hurting their daughter. My family is angry because they love her. Our friends are angry because I refuse to take her back saying that I'm overreacting. Two years of this crap and I'm overreacting. Am I the asshole?
My mom and dad make everything about my sister. They even tried to make my wedding about my sister. This is stupid, but I got engaged on Christmas. And when we went looking at venues the last week of December, we wanted a civil wedding, but not a church one. One of them had just had a cancellation, so we took that day. It's convenient because that venue has its own kitchen with a catering staff and bartender. It also has an in-house florist. We had to find our own officiant, photographer, and music for the reception. We're doing the invitations ourselves and we're gonna wear clothes that we already have. This was part of the reason we chose this venue and ended up taking the cancellation. It made our planning easy. Everyone that we're inviting lives in this city and we told them as soon as we signed the contract with the venue so they could mark the date if they wanted to attend. We gave them three months notice. That's awesome. That is fucking awesome. I love that that worked out for you. That's awesome. My mom and dad make everything about my younger sister. When they found out I didn't want kids and I won't be a parent, it became all about how it's not fair that I'm depriving her of being an aunt. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't want to have kids. That's not fair because then your sister will never know the joy of being an aunt. The fuck that got to do with me? When I had a mole removed from my cheek that turned out to be melanoma, it was all about how it would affect my sister because she was scheduled for fat removal surgery the next day and people would judge her for having cosmetic surgery versus mine being for cancer. Again, what the fuck does that have to do with me? Like, what? I'm doing well. It's been almost five years without a reoccurrence and the scar is barely noticeable. I love that. I'm so happy for you. These are just two examples, but there's so many more. I was stupid because I didn't think they would make my wedding about her too. My sister has had something called microblading done. Microblading where you get your eyebrows tattooed on. I'm doing well. It's been nearly five years without a reoccurrence and the scar is barely noticeable. I love that. I love that so much for you. These are just two examples, but there's so many more. I was stupid because I didn't think they would make my wedding about her too. My sister has had something called microblading done where you get your eyebrows tattooed on. Apparently, my sister didn't know it would be permanent. She's 28, so I don't know how someone that age didn't know that tattoos are permanent. What the fuck? So, so she just heard some shit and it sounded nice and without any type, without watching a single video, without doing any type of research, she just got the shit done and thought, what, it was going to peel off in a couple of weeks? Okay. <laughs> She didn't like how it looked, so she's getting laser removal. My parents and sister told me not to have my wedding while she's having the lasering done. They say I should wait at least a year or more to get married because it takes many laser sessions with several weeks in between the sessions to completely remove the tattoos. And until it's done, her eyeballs will turn red and yellow and they won't look good. Well, then I guess she ain't going to be in no pictures and she can't come. That has nothing to do with me. I'm not going to postpone my wedding because you don't like the way your fucking face look. You should have left it the fuck alone. My parents told me my sister's embarrassed about how she'll look in the pictures while undergoing the laser removal, especially if she can't wear makeup on them during it. They said I'm not allowed to have my wedding on the date that we chose and my sister agreed with them. Well, it looks like there's gonna be three less people at your wedding. This is your wedding. At your wedding, it's only supposed to be people that are happy for you, that are there to celebrate you and your groom. If your parents and anybody else was trying to make your wedding about anybody else, check them off the goddamn guest list. I guess you're not coming. You're not coming because our wedding will be on this day, at this time, at this place. Either you make it because we'll love to have you or you won't and we'll miss your presence. We didn't change the date. I don't live with my mom and dad or take money from them. So I'm not sure how they thought they could say that I'm not allowed. But my wedding is in six days and it still hurts that I won't have any family there. They're the only three relatives that I have and none of them will be there. They think the wedding is on the 6th, not the 30th, which I know is good, so they can't make a scene at my wedding. I'll have so many friends there to support me, but I still kind of wish my family would be there too. I'm excited about getting married, and I would never delay it because of my sister. But part of me still wants my mom and dad, and even my sister, to be there. I'm so sorry that your family sucks. I, I really am. I am truly sorry that your family fucking sucks and you can't even have one day that's supposed to be about you without them trying to make it about your sister. 
But just know that the people that are going to be at your wedding, that's your family. They may not be biologically related to you, but they love you. They are there because they want to celebrate one of the happiest days of your life with you. Just know that you, you are loved. You have a ton of actual family members that are happy for you. Don't, don't allow the sadness that you feel because your mom and your dad and your sister aren't going to be there to take over. It, it, it hurts, baby girl. It, it hurts, but it will get better. It will get better. As long as you continue to put these boundaries in place, that feeling will get better. Am I the asshole A Valentine's Day mishap? I'll try to keep this relatively brief. I semi-regularly buy my wife flowers from Costco because they're nice, last a while, and reasonably priced. I almost always get two dozen red roses for no other reason than to make her happy since she likes flowers. I occasionally get a thank you if I'm lucky. So a few weeks ago, I'm at Costco because I do all the grocery shopping and I grab two dozen roses because she's had a bad day at work. I get home and she reminds me she's leaving the next day for a work trip and I didn't even really get a thank you for the flowers. She gets back from the trip and later that day I get a call that my dad is unexpectedly moving to the ICU because he was recovering from a surgery that didn't go well. The next day I hop in the car and I drive three states over to see my parents. When I get there I realize that this is probably the end for him. My dad and I always liked ice cream, so while he was so lucid, I ran down the street to our favorite place to grab a few scoops to cheer him up. I see some Valentine's Day chocolates, and I grab some for my wife, not really thinking I'll be back for Valentine's Day or even be in the mood, but I get it anyway. My dad passes away a few days later, and the next day I have to drive back home three states over to pick up my kids and bring them back. Wife has a work trip she can't get out of, so she meets us a few days later for the funeral. While I was back packing up the kids, I leave the chocolate on my desk. I forgot to put it on her nightstand, and I wasn't really thinking about Valentine's Day. So the funeral is on Friday. On Sunday, my wife takes the kids back home three states over, and I stay behind to help my mom since this was very unexpected. I was only going to stay a few days, but my wife convinces me to stay for a week. Tuesday rolls around just a few days after my dad had passed away, and the first thing I do is text her, Happy Valentine's Day. Sorry I'm not there. Yada yada. The response? Stuck in traffic. Not feeling the love. Um, okay. She's in the car. No big deal. Didn't hear from her again until she calls on the way home from work. Had a short, normal conversation and didn't really discuss much or even Valentine's Day. She gets the kids to bed and texts me that she's drinking alone on Valentine's Day. This turns into a huge fight about how I didn't send her flowers or order her dinner for the night. <gasps> she didn't tell me when she would be back from the kids' activities or she had other plans that night. I'm three states away. How the fuck am I supposed to know when to order her dinner? I told her I bought her chocolates while my dad was in the ECU, but I left them on my desk. She then sends me a picture of the chocolates in the garbage. So in the end, my wife is pissed at me for not buying flowers or ordering her dinner while I'm three states away a few days after my dad's funeral. Oh my I told her we could do something when I'm back in town in a few days. Am I the asshole for not ordering something for Valentine's Day? Am I being insensitive? I can't believe I'm even have to ask this, but she's actually still pissed at me. Am I the asshole for telling my mother she will no longer be grandma to my 13-year-old son if she doesn't accept my devil baby? Six years ago, I, 33 female, moved four hours away from my family to escape my violent ex-partner, my son's dad. He passed away two years ago. Since his passing, my mother has been telling me that I should move back to my hometown. But I've made a very good life here for myself and for my son. We have amazing friends. I have a good paying job and I've been and I've begun nursing school. Good shit. Good shit. Every school holiday, my son goes back to our hometown to spend time with my mother, my brothers and his sons, as well as his paternal family. OK, so it's not like you're completely isolating your son away from his family. Every you said every school holiday, he goes back to be with his uncles, his cousins, as well as his dad's side of the family. A girl. I don't see, girl, your mama needs to lay off because you don't have to move back home. You're at home. You are home. Here's where I think I might be the asshole. 
13 weeks ago, I went out for drinks with people from nursing school. It was a get to know your classmates type of function. At some point during this night, my drink was spiked and I was great. I'm not sure by who. I have blurred flashbacks from the evening. Seven weeks after that, I found out that I was pregnant as I don't have regular periods. So I was unaware and I just thought I was getting sick because of the weather change. I confided in my mother who instantly replied, get rid of the devil baby. And this would never have happened if you moved back home when I told you to. And you're a fool for keeping this devil baby. No, what the fuck? What the absolute fuck? Like that, that's not the response that you're supposed to give when your daughter tells you that she was assaulted and is now pregnant because of it. Those are not the fucking responses you're supposed to have. I have strong religious beliefs and I believe that termination of pregnancy is against God's will. I have fertility issues as well, so I found it difficult to conceive naturally in the past. My mother knows this and for the past few weeks has been telling me to terminate the pregnancy and even hinted that if I don't, she won't play grandma to the devil baby. To which I replied that since she won't be grandma to the quote unquote devil baby, she doesn't deserve to be grandma to my 13 year old. She says that I'm being stupid and unreasonable. What the fuck? The school holidays just went by and my son was upset that he couldn't go to grandma's house as he, as he usually does for the holidays. I didn't tell him why. Instead, I made an excuse as, about having a doctor's appointment and some checkups. Am I the asshole? First of all, I want to acknowledge your strength. You are so fucking strong. You are finding a positive from a very terrible situation and I cannot help but admire you for that. You are so fucking strong. Just the fact that you have already put yourself, that you are keeping your baby shows me the strength that you have. And I'm so proud. I am so proud of you. I don't think you're the asshole. I don't. Because if my mother is capable of calling a ch my child, my child, a devil baby because of the way that they were conceived, I would not want them around my older child. I don't give a damn because I am not sure of the nasty things that you're going to tell my fucking son. And I'm going to try to avoid that in every fucking way, shape or form. I do not want you planting negative seeds in my 13 year old's head. So no, as long as you think this type, this way, these types of things, you cannot be around my older child. Absolutely not. Nah, baby, you're not the asshole. Just because they are, they are our parents does not mean that we can't tell them they're wrong. And your mother is fucking wrong. She's absolutely disrespectful for completely blaming you for what the fuck happened. It wouldn't have happened if you would have came home when I told you to. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, that's all the fuck you heard out of everything I just told, I just told you? Like, nah, baby. Just because she's your mom don't mean she can't be wrong. She's fucking wrong. She is wrong. You are not the asshole at all for deciding to keep your baby away from that type of negativity. That shit is toxic. Absolutely not. Hell no. Update. Pop, this email's been in my drafts for a couple of weeks now. I'm now 17 weeks pregnant, but I found out that I'm having a baby girl a and I'm planning on naming her Yanis, which means God's gift. I'm so excited, but scared at the same time. As my mother Made has stated, she will go to the authorities to, to try and gain custody of my son by deeming me unstable mentally for keeping the, the baby as well as an unfit mother. Life for allowing my son to know the truth about his sister's conception. He asked about her father and why I was doing this all alone. Girl, don't worry about that. Do not worry about that because you can't come and take my motherfucking kids away for some shit that you can't fucking prove. We all know that CPS does not, or Child Protective Services, whatever the hell you guys call it, don't always do their motherfucking job. So when somebody threatened me with some shit that I know does not hold any fucking wear, don't stress on that shit. Do not fucking stress on that shit. This is a narcissist losing fucking control. She's spiraling because she don't know what the fuck to do. Absolutely not. Allow her to rant and rave and scream and yell, but don't listen to that shit. For your mental health and the well-being of your children, block her. It is time for you to go low contact, if not no contact, with her until you, you are able to deliver your baby healthily. You do not need to be stressing over someone that's blaming you for being a fucking victim. Absolutely not. Hell no, don't worry about your mama. Don't fucking worry about your mother. I'm worried what's gonna happen because my mother has the funds that she can easily manipulate the right people if needed. 
Now my mother is saying, if I promise to give my daughter up for adoption, she'll drop all of this and things can go back to normal. And I can try again for a baby after I finish nursing school. Going no contact right now is literally the best option for you. And if you can, think about moving. It is time for you to cut contact with your mother 100%. When it comes to the point she wants to take your children away from you for not listening to her, she's the one that is not mentally sane. So if you can, work on shutting down everything that lets her know any type of information about you. Your social media, cut her off from all of that shit. Think about trying to move if it's possible. If you have a savings account, let's look into moving to a different location. Let your son know exactly what is going on. Let him know what's going on. That grandma is losing her fucking mind right now. He's 13 years old. He, he, he has the mental capacity to understand. Girl, no, that you're not the asshole for this because your mom is literally trying to take control of you and you're stopping her. You are stopping her in her tracks and she doesn't like it. You're not the asshole for this, babe. Am I the asshole for sending my girlfriend too many Valentine's Day flowers and making her sister's husbands look bad? To explain where I'm coming from here, I need to establish two things. One, I have a high paying job that often requires me to drop everything to travel without notice. It is infuriating sometimes, but I get paid well, so I've learned to live with it. Number two, my girlfriend loves flowers more than anything else. I get it. Most girls love flowers, but they are her favorite thing in the world. She literally makes me stop the car when we are driving just so she can take pictures of some pretty flowers that she sees. Early on in our relationship, I had to miss something important without notice. To make up for it, I sent her three dozen roses. She loved it and, probably as a joke, told me that I had set the bar so high and I had better always send her three dozen roses if I was going to let her down in the future. <laughs> We've been together three years since then and I've always sent three dozen roses whenever we would be apart. It's her tradition and we both love it. On to the dilemma. My girlfriend got bad news about a family member's health and headed back to her hometown a couple weeks ago. I couldn't join, but her two sisters came back with their husbands. Valentine's Day came around, and although it wasn't my fault we weren't together, I ordered a gift of three dozen roses plus candy and a stuffed animal. Day of, I got an alert from FedEx of a delayed shipment and panic. It broke my heart to think she wouldn't get any flowers that day, so I called around to a local florist and found one that could deliver them for free. I sent another gift back of three dozen roses. Turns out FedEx managed to deliver the original package as well. Girlfriend ended up with six dozen roses, two cards, two boxes of chocolates, and a teddy bear. She joked that I had now raised the bar and she expected no less than six dozen roses any time we were apart. All jokes aside, I could tell she really appreciated the trouble that I went through. The next day, I heard from her sister's husband. They were furious with me, saying I made them both look awful. Turns out one bought his wife a leftover bouquet of half-dead tulips and the other didn't get his wife anything at all. I guess they both were going to use the commotion as an excuse. My girlfriend ended up sharing her roses with both of our sisters so they could all feel special, but it was clear that they were all from me. My instinct was to take a victory lap, but my girlfriend's mom and dad called and explained that they thought I should apologize. While they appreciate me always making romantic gestures because I can afford to do so, but their other daughter's husbands can't. They see where things are going and assume that we'll all be family soon and it would be a good idea for me to make peace with the other two. That's true in a sense that I really didn't mean to do anything to their derailment. But I also never expected them to be such shitty partners that they thought it would be okay to not even bring their wives flowers on Valentine's Day. But maybe I'm wrong for holding them to the standard that I've set for my own relationship. So am I the asshole? Today I fucked up by quote unquote apologizing for cheating on my girlfriend on Valentine's Day. A little long, but here it goes. Massive fuck up from my end. This morning I, 23 male, woke up as early and organized as ever. I had my perfect plan for the day, walk over to my local trusted florist about 7.30 a.m., get a huge bouquet of roses for my girlfriend, let's call her M, 
21 female, get to the station for my business trip to another city and return tonight in time for our dinner. I'm normally a meticulous person, but for some reason this morning distractions took over and halfway to the florist, I realized I had left my wallet at home. No problem, I thought. I've known these guys since I was a kid. They'll let me pay later or tomorrow, right? Well, lo and behold, for some baffling reason, they were closed on Valentine's Day? All right, tight on time, I ran a short distance further to another florist who wouldn't let me come back and pay later. Defeated, I walked home when I passed a building, which I shit you not had a massive bouquet of roses resting on the gate. I thought once, twice, three times, then I just took it since it looked pretty abandoned and nobody was around. I've had lots of unique things happen to me over the course of my life, which could have easily solved a lot of problems, and I've stupidly ignored them due to morals and other reasons, so I wasn't going to pass on this divine rescue. I went to my girlfriend's house, dropped them on her front doorstep, and left, happy that she'd be happy. Well, that feeling was... <laughs> <laughs> well that feeling was to be short-lived when 30 minutes later i looked down at my phone to be greeted by six missed calls and i have do not disturb mode and 41 whatsapp notifications from a barrage of insults and heartbreak it turns out that the flowers had a note attached which i totally did not see and i did take a good look at the flowers said note was addressed to a certain v by her boyfriend, you guessed it, with a name that starts with my same initial, and this motherfucker signed off with just the initial, who profusely apologized for cheating, saying he didn't know what got into him, saying he only loved her, etc., to not break up, etc., the usual. So not only did my girlfriend find herself with a cheating boyfriend on Valentine's Day, but she also got a note hand-delivered by me in which she is called by another name, so now she must think she's the side piece and that I'm enough of a dumbass to have mixed the two of them up and sent her the flowers, <laughs> while in reality they were for the V who I was supposedly cheating on with my girlfriend. <laughs> the one time I took an opportunity, well, fuck me, dinner was an interesting night. <laughs> <Denver is crying. laughs> 